Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial on hopefully many will have on the topic of core animation. Now core animation is a technology developed by Apple that's essentially used to animate user interfaces. So if you want to animate something that's in your Cocoa app, core animation might be something you would like to look into. So it's a fairly simple, uh, I mean there's many, there's simple things to use and then there's also extremely uh, complex applications of core animation as well. So um, we'll obviously start with a lot of the easy stuff to begin, but then we'll dive into many of the deeper aspects of core animation. So with that being said, we'll talk about what animation is in this tutorial. We'll make an example of it in Xcode, and uh, that will be pretty much it for this tutorial. And then we'll talk you know, more about the in-depth stuff in later ones. But uh, with that being said, I have to also give a little shout out to Bill Dudney who is the author of Core Animation. It's a book that uh, discusses, obviously, Core Animation. And that book is uh, certainly one that I use to discover a lot about Core Animation, and uh, it's where I get a lot of my understanding from. So without that book, I uh, would not be able to do these tutorials probably. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in Core Animation at all, the book is a little outdated, but certainly a good read if you're interested in that sort of thing. Obviously, you probably are because you're watching these tutorials. All right, um, so yeah, go check that book out. Uh, let's go ahead and begin. So here's an example of no animation. So we're just going to talk about what animation is, and then hopefully you'll be good to go. No animation is the idea that we have an image on the left, right? And using no animation at all, we want to put it on the right side of the screen. So how could we do that? Well, we could easily just say, okay, image, go to this image position, right? We just change the position of the frame of the image, and then the image will appear on the other side. And there's no intermediate process, it just appears. And that's the idea, right? There's no animation here, we just told something to go instantaneously to some other spot, and it did it. So we change one value without any, you know, elapsed time, basically. Alright, that's the idea of no animation, very simple. Um, animation is the idea that we change values over a period of time. So over this animation, I believe, takes a second, but basically over this time period, we're, you know, in, in intermediate steps, we're changing some values over this period of time. So as we can see, we animate this sort of bike. It goes slowly from the, uh, the left side to the right side, and it does a bunch of different things. So we change the size of the final bike, right? We change the opacity, which means it's a little less see-through, and we also moved it. So all these sort of things are easily done using core animation, uh, but the idea here is very simple. Animation is simply the change of values over some time, and throughout that time, right, you're changing the values throughout. I don't know, I guess that's pretty much the best explanation I'm going to give. So uh, let's just so show that again, right? Over a period of time, we're slowly intermediate steps for changing values, changing the opacity, changing the size, changing the position. And then if we were to animate it back the other way, right, we do the same thing just in reverse. So we're over this period of one second, uh, in little intervals of time, we're changing these values to eventually get to their final value. All right, that's animation. So with that being said, let's use an example or create an example in Xcode. So if we want to use a picture in, uh, you know, you can take any picture that you have on your computer, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to be stealing this pretty picture of the bike because I don't feel like finding a picture. But if you got a picture of like, I don't know, your goofy friend and you want to show them how you can animate them, then why not? You know, you can use that. It really doesn't matter what image you use. But if you don't have an image lying around and you want to get one, you can hit Command Shift 4. Command Shift 4 will then allow you to drop these little crosshairs, and then you just click and drag, and that will create the picture. So whenever you want the picture, just let go of your mouse, takes a picture, and that picture will now appear on the desktop. All right, so let's go ahead and hide that. And speaking of animation, that's a nice one, right? <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and change the name so we can see that the image of the bike that I just took is now on our desktop. I'm going to just change it to be image, and now we have image.png sitting on our desktop. All right, so there's our image there. Let's go ahead and make 
some code. So go ahead and open up Xcode 4 if you haven't already. And Xcode 4 is what we're going to be working in. And then Xcode 5 will probably be coming out within a month or two. So you might see a transition somewhere along there. But uh, for now, we're using Xcode 4. So um, Xcode 4 and 5, I think, are basically going to be the same thing. So nothing much to worry about. But to create these applications, we want to go under OS 10, make a Cocoa application. And we're going to call this Lesson 1. And I'll change those, obviously, as we go through. Then uh, we want to create a, we, sorry, we do not want to create a document-based app, so we'll leave that deselected. We don't want core data and we don't want unit test. The only thing we want selected is to use automatic reference counting. All right, go ahead and do that and save it to some folder that you want to save all these core animation tutorials and then create. All right, so I won't show you that process again in the next tutorial, but uh, we'll just create you know a new project and you'll be expected to know how to do that. So, you know, I'm sure I'm sure everyone knows how to do that anyway by now. If you're not familiar with uh, Coco, however, I do suggest you check out the Coco tutorials that I already have on my channel because I'll be using many Coco concepts in uh, these tutorials. And if you're not really familiar with Coco, you might, you know, you might sort of fall behind. So this uh, these tutorials do expect you understand a little bit of Coco. If uh, you want to quickly jump into these, you know, the first like 15 Cocoa tutorials should be pretty good to get you started. So anyway, uh, with that, let's go ahead and begin. So we got our window here. I just resized it to make it a little bigger. Let's go ahead and make a custom view. So just type in custom view, drag out a view, resize it to fill the whole screen. Like so, all right, that looks nice. Now I want to select this view. And under the identity inspector, I want to change the class of this image to be, or this view rather, to be something else. Now, I haven't made anything yet, but uh, we will in just a second. So by default, we just have some NS view, but we need to be able to customize it, right? We need to be able to say what's going to appear in the view. So to do that, we make a new Objective-C class. To do that, you can go File, New, New File, or Command-N. That's what I'm going to do from now on. So. Just go ahead and hit Command N. Um, we want under OS 10, select Coco, go to an Objective C class, and we want the subclass of NS View, and we will just call this Move View because we're going to be making that same animation that we made a little earlier in Keynote. All right, so here, uh, make sure your target is selected, or else you'll probably have errors running around. Uh, so that's good. We have our move view now, and as you can see, it's a subclass of NS view. Good. Okay. So anyway, here's our move view dot m, and in this file, uh, it gives us some you know sort of predefined stuff. We don't want a draw rect though for this example, so you can go ahead and delete that. What we do want though is to uh, use some of the in it with frame stuff. So go ahead and leave in it with frame as it is and uh, we'll go from there. So go back into our main menu nib though before we move ahead anymore. And we gotta change our custom view. So under the identity inspector here and class, we wanna change the class to be the new subclass we just made, which was move view and save that. All right, and as you can see, our view should now be called move view. This just means when our application is created, it's gonna create an instance of our move view class which uh, is going to contain all the great stuff that we're trying to animate all right so let's talk about how we can do this so anytime uh, th this view is basically just going to represent our uh, kind of canvas right we're going to draw stuff on this view and that's what we're going to do so in the move view what we're going to have is an image view and we're just going to move this image view along inside of this view. So the move view is just kind of like our container and then we're going to have stuff that moves inside of it. All right, so um, with that being said, we want to create an NS image view. Image views simply hold on to images as the name might suggest and it's a view so it can display images. I'm going to use the underscore or is that what it, underscore? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, uh, whatever that is, underscore uh, syntax basically for my instance variables, you can use that if you want. It's just kind of a convention for me and for many people, I guess. But uh, if you want to use the underscores, feel free to. If you don't, don't bother using them. 
Um, that's just a convention for instance variables. All right, uh, another thing I wanna make are the two frames. So I wanna have an NS rect. This is uh, how you create frames basically in Cocoa or iOS for most the most part. Um, so NS rect and we wanna make a start rect or start frame I'll call it. And NS rect will be our end frame. All right, so just to give you a little idea of what we're looking at here, the start frame we're gonna have somewhere on the left side and so this will be the frame that we're going to create our image view with. So our image view will start with some frame on this side, and then the end frame is where we're going to end up. So we'll end up somewhere on this side, and that will be the end frame. All right, so let's talk about how we create these frames. Uh, first off, I'm going to get two different things. So I'm going to say CG float, and we're going to get the width of our move view. So that move view, our big container view here, we want to get the width of it. To get the width, we can say NS width, and then we just pass in an NS rect. This frame right here is an NS rect. As you can see, it just represents the frame of our view. So the whole move view itself, we want to get its width, so we just pass in its frame. Uh, the CG float, and uh, this will be the height. To get the height, we can just use the same function, NS height, and that will get the height of any rect that we pass in. So that'll get the height of our move view frame. Cool. All right. So you might be wondering why I just did that, but we'll use those variables in just a second. Now we want to create our start and end frame. So our start frame, to create any frame, you just use the function nsmakeRect. nsmakeRect is just the way that you can create rectangles easily. So it'll allow you to create this uh, it'll allow you to create the um, the frames basically that we want to represent. Uh, the, and that's the function that you can use. So, what does it take? Well, it takes uh, the origin. So, just as you might uh, want to understand, if I look at NS rect, see if I can get a nice picture for you of what an NS rect is. So, now nah, let me not do that because that's going to get too complicated. All right. So basically, NS rects just have an origin and a size, and the origin represents the kind of like start location of our rectangle and the size represents the width and the height of the rectangle. So if I look at an example here, our start frame, like I was saying, we're going to put a frame sort of in this bottom left section of our move view and that's going to rep represent the start frame. So the start frame, the origin of the start frame is going to be in the bottom left. Now. Coco coordinates work differently than iOS, so if you're working in iOS, it's going to be different. But the Coco system that's on OS X works that the bottom left corner is your origin point of anything, basically. So the bottom left of any frame or view is always your origin point. The origin point is always 0, 0. So our move view is 0, 0 here, and as we go up in the y direction, we're increasing in height or we're also increasing the Y value. So if I was to go up like this, that would be like up 200 pixels or something like that, right? Uh, if I went to the right, we're increasing in the X direction, and this would be like 300 or 200 pixels to the right, or in the X direction. So this, the point in the bottom left of anything represents the origin, and then the size has a height and a width. So if I said that uh, we have a frame, the height has 300 pixels, and or 300 points I should be saying 300 points and uh, the uh, x direction our width has 100 then we would be over here so this sort of area right here would represent the region of our frame all right so this should make more sense though uh, once we've gone through this whole tutorial so the start frame like I said was in that bottom left corner we can represent that with the x and y values of zero that's our origin point zero zero then the CG float W, this represents the width, obviously. So the width is whatever our width is here. And we want this to be, let's say, one third of the size of the total frame. So to get that, I could just say width divided by 3.0. If I want my height to be similar, I could just say height divided by 3.0. This just takes our height values that we got here, which are the total width and height of the entire container frame that we have, right? Our move view is like this big container. 
and then we're dividing them by three. So whatever the width is of our total frame, we divide by three, and height, same thing, we divide it by three. So that makes a little frame in the bottom left corner of our rectangle. All right, let's make our end frame now. This one's gonna be a little more complicated and should uh, help you understand how these work. So let's say our end frame will be a rectangle sort of like this. So that's basically the idea of what our rectangle is going to be. And what is this going to mean? Well, our origin now has moved, right? The origin, like I said, is always the bottom left of the frame. And if we've moved the origin to be here, right, if this is going to be the frame, something like this, then our origin is the bottom left corner of that frame. So this would represent uh, moving about halfway across, sorry, halfway across the total width, right, of our move view. So this would be like width divided by two for our x value. The y value is like, I don't know, like 100 pixels up or 100 points up. So I'll talk about the difference between pixels and points in a later tutorial. But anyway, just for now, bear with me. But we've got, uh, you know, we've moved about 100 points up and uh, that, that'll represent our origin point right there. Then for our size, right, we need to say how wide it is. So let's say the size for our height and width are going to be half of the width and height. So if we have half the width, it'll go to this corner, right? And if we have half the height, it should go up to like here or something, if that's uh, our frame. So let's go ahead and enter those values in. So like I said, the width of our origin, or sort of the x value of our origin, will be the total width divided by 2. The y value is going to be like I said, about 100 points up. Our CG, uh, this is our, sorry, our width value. And the width, like I said, is going to be half the width of the entire rect, which is our move view, right? And then we want our, uh, our height to be about the same thing. So we'll just say height divided by 2.0. All right, so those create the two frames. The start frame in the bottom left, and then our end frame is kind of to the right, and then kind of up a little more. All right, so those are the two frames. Now now we have to make that image. So to throw in an image, let's just drag this over or down a little bit. We've got our image in our desktop, and let's just drag it into our Xcode project. I'll throw it in the supporting files folder there, and you just want to make sure that you're copying the items into the destination. So make sure that's selected and finish. All right, so now we've put our, uh, our image into our supporting files and there's that image of our bike. All right, so let's go back to our move view and let's create our image view. So we have our image view and we have to initialize this. So to do that, we say NS image view alloc init and we have to initialize it with a particular frame. Now, like I was saying, we want it to start where the start frame is. So we can just put in start frame and that will initialize our image view to be the same position that our start frame was that we just created. All right, uh, with that being said, let's add the image now. So we say image view, set image, and we'll go up to this one first. So to add the image in, we have to use an NS image object, as you can see here. NS image objects we can easily create by saying NS image image named and then the name of our image. So the name of our image is image.png. So we just want to pass in image.png as a string and that will create our image. So here we have our image created and then we pass that image into our image view. All right, uh, we also need to specify how this image is going to be kind of put into the image view. So to say this, we want to say image view set image scaling and then we want to use the NS image scale axis independently. And this just means it'll basically fill the image view that we have. All right, so those are all the things we need. The last thing we need to do is basically put this image view onto our move view, right? We've created this image view in memory. We, we, we've only just created an image view. We haven't put it into anything, right? We haven't, we haven't uh, displayed it anywhere yet. So the only thing that we really have displaying right now, as you can see, is our move view. The move view is the only thing that's going to be really shown. So to show an image view, we have to put it inside of our move view. And so to do this, we can say self, self being the move view, and we want to add a sub view, and this just adds a view. So 
and this image view is a view and we can just add our image view like that all right so if we went ahead and ran this now we should see that this works out and there you go so now we have our bike and it's kind of moved to scale the axis correctly but you can see that the bike fills that you know that frame of uh, the image so it's kind of hard to see with that background but maybe I should have picked a better background but nonetheless uh, if you're running this on your Mac at home you should be able to see that uh, the image perfectly fills that start frame that we created all right so we don't have any animation yet how do we create the animation well we have to be able to move it from the start frame to the end frame so let's go ahead and do that what we want to be able to do is basically hit some key on our keyboard and then we'll animate the image to that that position so to allow key presses basically we have to be able to say that we accept first responder accepting first responder just means that you're allowing yourself to take key presses in basically um, I mean there's a lot more to that but being the first responder basically accepts uh, keys that's I mean, there's, I have another tutorial on first responders, but uh, this is simple enough for uh, this tutorial. So if we want to accept key presses, we have to accept the first responder. So we just say return yes to this, uh, this method. This method just says that yes, we will accept first responder status. All right. Now, if you want to uh, accept keys, you can use it, either use the key down or the key up method. So key down basically means whenever you press a key down, then uh, you will get whatever is uh, is pressed, right? Key down means you press down on a key and then it'll trigger some action. So if I want to move my view in this, this is where I can implement all this great stuff. So let's, uh, let's just move it from the start frame to the end frame. And how would we do that? Well, we just change the frame of where our image is. So we'd say image view set frame to be the end frame all right so if we did that we can hit run and if we hit any key I'll hit the space bar and as you can see we kind of moved our image to the right like that all right so that's uh, that i need to fix my rectangle though here because it's not displaying properly so this is actually a common issue so if you uh, if you want to fix this and don't know how uh, it often compare, complains that the content rectangle isn't entirely in the view or in your window. Uh, so what you can do is just select the window like this, go to the little ruler and uh, drag this kind of picture down until your window is sitting in the middle. All right, and that should fix the issues that uh, it's complaining about. All right, so let's run that again just to show you the fixed version. All right, there we go. So now it looks now it looks proper as it should have in the first place. All right, so as you can see, we moved the image from one spot to the other, but there really was no animation there, right? It just moved from the start frame and then we put it at the end frame. That's what our method did. There's also another problem with this. We can't we can't move it back, right? There is no option to, you know, if I hit the, I can hit the space bar all day long, but our image isn't going anywhere else. Why is this? Well, simply because we didn't tell it to go anywhere else, right? In our let's go back to move view.m if we look at this we can see that our key down is simply saying go to the end frame and then there's nothing else that we ever tell it so we have to have some way of knowing whether or not we're at the end frame or not and to do this we can do this quite simply with a bool so bool is just a yes or no and we could say is at start all right and is at start will be a bool that allows us to detect whether we are at the start of the um, the uh, what do I want to say start of the animation or not or the start frame right so if uh, is it start so uh, let me just let me just change something here so when we start out right is it start is at the start so we want to say this is yes right because we do when we create our image view we're starting at the start frame so our bool for is it start should be true or yes all right, so is it start? If we're at the start, we want to be able to move to the end, right? So we could say image view, set frame, go to the end. Otherwise, means that is at start is false or that we're at the end frame. So then if we're at the end frame, we want to move back to the beginning. So we can say set frame and we'll say start frame. 
All right, so the only thing is we have to make sure that we are changing the value of our bool as we go along. So otherwise, it's always just gonna have a value of yes. So what we really want is every time we hit down on the key, we're changing the value of is start to the opposite of what it was before. To do that, you just say is it start gets not is it start. That just flops the value, right? If is it start is yes when this starts, then now it's the opposite of that. It'll be no. All right, so let's go ahead and run this one more time. And as you can see, now we can flop back and forth all day. And this is the same idea that we saw within Keynote, right? We moved one image from one side to the other, and uh, we actually are now changing the size and the or the you know changing the size of the bike. But the same idea. There is no animation. We're just changing from one position and then going to the other. All right, so how do we animate this? Well, in Coco, there is a very easy way to do this, and uh, I'll talk much more about it in the next tutorial, actually. But um, how we can do this is we can use what's known as the animator proxy. Now, NSView and NSWindow both have the option to use this animator proxy, and what it is is basically an object that animates different changes for us. So if we want to simply animate this change, we can say, well, we want to ask the animator proxy to do it for us. So we just call this method animator. Animator is uh, just a method that you can use on both NSView objects and also NSWindow. And the animator will allow you to change these values. So uh, we will now be asking the animator, hey, can you set the frame to be the end frame? And the animator will do the work to actually change the positions. Like I said, I'll talk much more about this in the next tutorial, but uh, for now, we'll just uh, we'll just accept it as animating our images or our views. All right, so as we can see, if I hit it now, there's this kind of smooth animation that takes place from one position to the other. Now, what else can this do? Well, like I was saying in the keynote, or the you know we were changing the opacity as well. So how would we do that? Well, we can ask the image views animator to set the alpha value and as all ns views can change their alpha value to be something alpha value alpha value is the same as opacity one being fully visible zero being not visible at all so if we're going to the end frame let's change it to 0 0.25 and if we're going to the beginning image view animator set alpha value to be 1.0 all right, so let's run this. And as we can see, if we animate, our alpha value changes. Now we're a little less visible, but we can see that it's animated as it goes across. So that's, you know, that's a very simple example of how you can get animation to work. If you really want to, uh, you know, work more with this example, you could uh, figure out how you could actually change this for when the window is adjusted. That would be a fun thing to try. Uh, this is a little more involved, and I really didn't cover how you do this in this tutorial, but uh, if you would like to know, maybe I can do something on that. But if you uh, look this up yourself, you'll notice that obviously our width and height values of where this image is going don't change. So uh, if you want to fiddle around and try to get you know the new end frame to be over here, uh, be my guest and see how you can get that to work. But this is all I had to show you for uh, you know this example. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, and like I said, in the next tutorial we'll be talking about what this animator proxy really is, what it means, and how uh, it does the things that it does. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. Please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to me on Twitter as well with the Lucas Dera Twitter handle, and see you in the next tutorial.